Welcome to Pushing 40-Bit, the podcast about single-player games with friends. I'm Frosty, we're here with Clipper and Cynic, and today's episode, uh, for our first episode, we're going to talk about Crisis. I'm spinning too much, I can already tell. (laughs) (laughs) Spinning's good, I'll just spin, I'll balance it out. Zen. Wait, so do I rotate? If we're both together? I I don't know. You can bounce. I didn't get an A in physics, I'll be honest. Do an Oompa Loompa Diddy. Anyway. So, um, we want to talk about Crisis. Um, some background came out 2007 in November, so we're almost exactly 11 years. Wow. Today. 11 years. Um, let's see. Published or developed by Crytek, published by EA, um, it uses the Cry Engine. But it's not the first game to do so. Um, Far Cry 1 came out in 2004, and that was the first use of the CryEngine. I think Crisis is technically on uh, CryEngine 2, mm-hmm. and then I think they're on 5 or 6 at this point. Because I don't remember Far Cry 1 running, running that crap. I never played the Far Cry 1. Oh, I did. It definitely didn't feel the same as this one. Yeah. I don't know. I, I never played it. None of the other Far Cries use the CryEngine. Like It's like a... I think it's a very highly modified version of it, but they don't like list hmm. it as a game under the games that use the CryEngine. Hmm. Um, the game is set in the faraway year of 2020. <laughs> we got two years. Two, uh, two years from now. Um, and then six years after Hoverboard, right? Or no, five years after Hoverboard, so I can yeah. do math. There you go. That's hard. Um, the funny thing I thought also was uh, if you listen to the radios in the game, it talks about President um, Kim Jong Chul, which is Kim Jong Un's older brother. Oh, really? Killed? He did not become president when Kim Jong Il died because Kim Jong Il thought he was too effeminate, and <laughs> not a like hard enough, like ruthless enough person, and so he made his youngest son Kim Jong Un dictator. We should probably just get out of the way right off the bat. Crisis one, fairly racist. <laughs> 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 Just throughout, but you know, still a fun game. So one thing I noticed is when, when you were selecting your difficulty when you were first starting, mm-hmm. it said, okay, you can see like visual indicators for grenades. And then one of those NPCs speak Korean versus English. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I chose English. And it didn't help me at all. It just shouted racist things like, take this Yankee. Yes, and yes. I was like, what? Yeah. It, it felt very Hogan's Heroes, right? Like, yeah. It's like, oh, I speak German. I know nothing. Well, <laughs> really, that's German. All right. Well, and also you... You just land, and there's never a discussion of, like, should we, like, do I have free reign to, like, shoot anyone? It's just, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm landing, all Koreans are fair game. Yeah, like, right. I, I can shoot anyone, <laughs> we're just getting the hostages out. Like, well, yeah. it's supposed to be taking place in the Philippines, too. You're like, are there no natives? Like, are, Is it if I, I thought it was a Korean island. No, so it's, it's an island in the Philippines, but it's, on, it's occupied by the Koreans, right? And so okay. I'm just like, well, if I, you know, just shoot someone who's vaguely... Not me. Am I going to be shooting a Filipino or am I going to be shooting a <laughs> I think you need to listen for the There's racist no. accent that comes back to you. Yeah, that's clearly how So the first yeah. kill in my game, sadly, was not a North Korean or myself. It was the poor little tortoise walking <laughs> up the beach. Yeah. So I see this little fella just, like, walking up the beach, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if they've made this interactive. So I walk up and I pick him up, and I'm like, hey, I can pick up a tortoise. And I ran out to the ocean, and I tossed him in, and said, there you go, little fella. And then I thought, do tortoises swim? <laughs> They don't. Yeah, no, that. it just drank. It, it just sank like a rock, and I killed it. So I was oh. like, hmm, "Well, that's that." I, I had the same thought when I went. I, I circled that turtle tortoise like ten times, and I cannot tell which is supposed to be. It's like a hybridization of both. It looks like the back feet are more like a turtle. Front looks more like a tortoise. It, it's like half dome shell, half flat shell. I I couldn't tell. It was I don't know. You spent a lot of time <laughs> investigating that tortoise. <laughs> I was very curious because I, I couldn't know. figure out which one it was. But Can we comment on your glasses before we go any sure, further yeah. into this? These uh, these help me to not get migraines, and also to hide my general dad eyes, which are haggard and saggy. So even though we're just talking, you're still going to wear them? I just wanted to mock you on mic. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can mock me. <laughs> there is a <laughs> screen in the room. I actually wear these at work, and I get mocked at work too, so that's just oh, Okay, fun. so just part of life. Yes. Okay. Which well, is interesting like in uh, a gaming blog or podcast that we have real jobs. Yes. Wait, what? And, <laughs> and none of us live with our mothers. Yet. Yet. <laughs> At this point, it would probably be mothers living with us. Oh, yeah, that's the point. Fun fact, 
We've both lived with my mother at one point. I have. Yes, indeed. That I... is odd. Anyway, back to Crisis. <laughs> Tangent. Um, graphics. We need to okay. talk about graphics. I think it's aged pretty well. It has. I thought so too. But did you notice that the, the color depth wasn't what we're used to? It felt like the old voodoo cards from about 2001, like where they were doing 16-bit textures, but upscaling up to 32, or like trying to emulate 32. Because every now and then I'd hit a dust spec, I'd get like those little sparkle artifacts. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it felt like to me. I so, have, especially on the like where the the levels where the sun was setting, mm -hmm. it looked like the, the people were taking pictures in the trees. Like yeah. they were just flash, 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 flash all over the place. Oh, I thought those were supposed to be fireflies on the island. Maybe. But it was pretty far away. That I, was I literally seeing. thought they were just supposed to be I fireflies, was, like glowing seeing, in the dark. I was seeing it from far away. So if maybe. anyone knows what those are, let us know. Because I don't. thought it was artifacts. <laughs> yeah, I did too. It, it could be. Fireflies, maybe impressive. Well, because a lot of times there was like, uh, so for example, like in the interrogation room, you could see the light cascading down, and there was specific dust particles that were floating around. Yeah. Right? It, so they were clearly intentional with what they were trying to do, and so I assumed that it was intentional fireflies. But maybe not. Maybe I was just giving them the benefit of the doubt where it didn't belong. Possibly. I, I definitely know. called it out in my gameplay. I was like, oh, look, fireflies, and like, <laughs> walked on. Huh. Mm -hmm. But again, my basis of comparison is way different than you guys. You guys had like voodoo cards and graphics cards. I was always integrated graphics back in the day. And so anything I would compare it to would have been, you know, software rendered, yeah. right. low def. And so to me, it seems better than any game I played in 2007, by far. Mm. Head and shoulders above. So, so speaking of graphics at that time, I actually brought an artifact. Oh, yes. This is the graphics card I was using in 2007. <laughs> this is a uh, EVGA 8800 GTS, which kind of was the bee's knees back when it came oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, what I wouldn't have done for yeah. that card. Yeah, this was, actually I still have the plastic wrap on it. Hmm. Anyway. That usually happens. Um, it was 2.99. I got it at uh, Circuit City. So there's- Rest in peace. Yeah. May it rest in peace, right? Um, and I bought it right after Crisis came out because when Crisis was being marketed to everyone, it was, you need a new machine for Crisis. Yeah. Yeah. And the joke was, will it run Crisis? Like, That's still a joke. Which yeah, it I still is. Believe. Yeah. Like when they announced the RTX series just lately, like yeah. all the comments were, will it run Crisis? And I'm like, why is this still a joke? Yeah. Like, it's insane that that's lived this long. And back in the day, it was true though. Like I was rocking oh, yeah. before I bought that card. Um, it was something not quite that. I bought that card, cranked everything to Ultra, saying I've got a three hundred dollar graphic card in two thousand seven. Graphics card money back before mm -hmm. they were eight hundred nine hundred dollars, yeah. right? Um, I threw it in, went up to Ultra. It was PowerPoint. It was literally one two frames a second PowerPoint wow. with the best card I could buy at the time. Yeah. So. Was it graphically intensive? Yes. There's no doubting that. It yeah. was. Was it maybe not optimized that well? That's what I was wondering. Is optimization, because there's nothing else since on the CryEngine that everyone has looked at such this yeah. graphics powerhouse. It, so how did it run for you guys? Oh, it ran great. Yeah, I mean, I, now. I, I don't know. It, it would crash, right? And when it would crash, it definitely had graphic artifacts that were part of the problem, right? So when I would yeah. see it crash, I would, it would usually go gray for a while first, and then around the edge you would see, you know, the artifacts sliding kind of out of frame, right? And so that was a problem. Now granted, it didn't crash often for me, but when it did, graphics were definitely in play. And also sometimes when it would load from a save point, uh, so for example, like I was hiding underneath of something, crouched, and I got killed, and then it loaded the autosave, because I just happened to kill the thing at that time. It auto-loaded, and I was like below the floor, and I could see everything, <laughs> and I had to like, you know, squirrel jump my way out of the graphics and then suddenly the graphics were able to self-repair but they were all crazy for a while because huh. i was getting micro stutters even with my monster rig i couldn't g-force or uh, g-sync would not work mm. i like screen tearing like super bad so i had to turn on v-sync which locked it at 60 so they must have just had it hard coded like not to because normally v-sync is sure you know whatever your monitor's refresh rate it locks it up but i think this was just 60 because that was at the time that was whatever the highest was yeah and so I locked it at 60 and then I didn't have problems any. So I never did that. I let it, it just kind of go all over the place and perhaps would hit up 200, 210, 230, and then I go to 30. And it, uh, was, it was just all over the place for me. Crazy. That's I mean, it was playable 99.9% .9 of the time, yeah. but you'd load a new area, a new asset would load. Yeah. And it would be like, there's the asset. You know, I could yeah. feel each asset. Oh. Definitely between loading areas, I noticed it. Right? When, well, so they didn't call them loading areas, but during the auto save, right, when you transition from one area to the oh, next, okay, yeah. I would see a massive slowdown and drop. And I noticed it most when I was driving. So I would drive from like uh, 
So the, remember where there was a bunch of landmines, right? So I drove to where there were landmines, and by the time it had uh, responded, I was in the landmines and they exploded, <laughs> right? Like, so you're saying you actually drove the vehicles? Oh, all the time. No, first time I got in a vehicle, I might as well had a neon sign that shoot me, North Koreans. Oh, here I am. Yeah, like I, I was massive tank. I just had, no. I, I had a blast tanking my way through this whole game. <laughs> It was like stealth. Forget stealth. I've got a giant I was tank. So, <laughs> infinite ammo. I was so slow and stealthy, like the entire time. Like I'm gonna snipe everyone from as far away as possible, because I felt like the enemies were cheap. They had like superhuman oh, reactions. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, but there were places where like I didn't even fight them. I was like, you know what? There's a lot of missile launchers here. And I would just drive through <laughs> and barrel through to the next area. So the AI. Let's talk about the AI for a second. Yeah, yeah. The AI was terrifying, and I'll tell you why the AI was terrifying. Whenever I... Besides the racism. Oh, that racism is clearly the main thing here. Mm -hmm. Anytime I would do anything, anything with my cryo suit, they knew exactly where I was and there's fire incoming. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I was, hated that. I was cloaked in the full... And I did the motion, like the middle click. <laughs> yeah. thing. By the way, did that glitch for anyone else? The middle click trying to switch powers? Only when I oh, uh, so. changed resolutions. Because I'd hit the button and go... And I'm getting shot going, maximum armor, maximum <laughs> armor. And it's just that they're going, boop, 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 boop. I couldn't get to load. But then it, it's, then it started coming up. But I'd go yeah, sneak. I'd grab a guy, which I guess grabbing a guy by the throat isn't the quietest thing you can do. <laughs> but I am a super soldier, and I should have been able to crush the windpipe and keep him quiet, right? Well, I grab him, and then four, five, four guys start shooting at me. And I'm like, what did I do to tip them off? Yeah, and I'm like 300 yeah. yards away. That made me so mad. Like... Probably one of my biggest complaints is that there was like the illusion that you could that it was a stealth game because there's a cloak mechanic because you have mm -hmm. silencers on your weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's no silent takedown. Mm -hmm. No. You can't basically can't kill anyone without shooting them. Right. Um, but you can grab, but that you uncloak and you know there's that's kind of pointless too. Um, but just yeah, like I like I always wanted to have a way to stay cloaked kill people, not have groups of enemies run at me like wherever I shot from. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was that was frustrating. I think that was part of the reason why I didn't do stealth. And because I gave up on stealth so early on that I didn't even realize there was a grab mechanic until I was fighting aliens in the mothership in like no gravity. Okay, right? Because yeah. they would like bump into you and just start meleeing you and it's yeah. like grab enemy. I was like, what? I didn't know <laughs> I could do this. Yeah. Yeah, I think almost everything you can grab. Uh, too much. Like, I'd be trying to grab a hammer, and it's like, here's a box. Don't want the box. Yeah. Here's a chicken. Don't want the chicken. <laughs> I, it was also weird that, like, some things you would pick up were, like, instantly destructive. Did you ever pick up, like, one of those uh, ammo crates? Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're holding an ammo crate, you can demolish an entire one of those sheds, like those shantytown sheds. You mm -hmm. pick it up, you bump into a wall, and it collapses on you and starts, like, flying off, and all the pieces will go everywhere. It's crazy. I had a few times where I died because... I like ran into a wall and the whole shed would collapse on top yeah. of me. Yeah. Oh, at like, full speed? No, not like even that. I was just standing there, yeah. Yeah. And a few times where I died where I wasn't sure why I died and I was like, mm. I think something hit me, something like physics wigged out and killed me, but I have no idea. We kept a tally, I think it was like three or four times that I died to, I don't know what. Just no clue. Yeah. Those, those shanty sheds were not covered either. Like, I'd die oh, anything. Yeah. hey look, I'm safe here, and then they just come over on me. I'm like, well... well or well. like a tank would just shoot through it, yeah, like... Yeah. I... Which, I mean, I guess is realistic, right? Like, if a tank eighth of a millimeter yeah. of corrugated <laughs> tank is going to block a bullet. Yeah. yeah. You're just not used to that in most games. Yeah, yeah. Normally you can hide behind, you know, a crate, and you're safe for at least a few bullets, yeah. and even if they have... Explosion mechanics where the crate like disintegrates like it's clear you can see that the assets getting weaker and mm -hmm. now it breaks and you need to bail or mm -hmm. it's just like Pow! it's gone. Yeah, and it's gone. How did you feel about the missions themselves? I thought they made I thought they made sense they stitched together they wove a narrative They kept the narrative just vague enough that you didn't have to question it while you were doing it until you get towards the end, and then the missions all kind of degrade because you're like, there's too much information, and now they don't make sense as to why we're doing certain things. Okay, yeah. I don't know how soon we want to get into the spoilers, but... Well, whenever. Yeah. If people are watching this. All right, so if okay, you're watching well, How long has it been? It's been 11 years. <laughs> Come on, yeah. statute of limitations, 11 years on a game. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. But if you really want to hear the, the experience the story by yourself, pause now. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, toward the end, you're on the aircraft carrier, the aliens are attacking everything, right? Uh, Miss Bear Midriff Scientist is saying, <laughs> we need to, you know, not nuke the island, island or it's just going to get, you know, way 
stronger, right? So yeah. we nuke the island, it gets stronger, and then the big baddie comes right to your ship, it's going to screw up your ship, and what do you do? You nuke him. And then there's the big thing above the ship, and you blast it open, and you nuke it. And now it was just it the bubble that sense, was right? nuke. The bubble was nuke? But, like, the whole point of the game yeah, was that these aliens were drawing from your suit power, which was a tough... Every time they came by, your suit would fritz out, right? Yeah, because yeah. they're drawing from power. They end up on the aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. They start drawing from that power and reanimating, right? But yet, you can nuke this alien minutes after this lady made fun of the general for nuking it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And can we I just think of that way, yeah. can we just take a small moment to ask, why did they drop tanks on the island? Because right after that moment, not right after, but after you go through the weird Ender's Game style scene of the game, which we'll talk about. Inside the aliens? Yeah. Okay. You get a VTOL. Hey, and you just fly around and destroy anything anyway. Yeah. So like, why'd you give me a tank and make me drive I, around? Well, this is one of the reasons I brought up missions is because I felt like the whole game was very roller coastery. Like you would play sure. some really great ones, and there would be like an awful one or two, mm -hmm. and then back to good. Yeah. The tank part being awful. Oh. See, I loved when the, the tank came out. Right, I was like, oh sweet, I'm gonna get to drive the tank, and then they just used it to blow down the wall. I'm like, oh crap, I didn't even get to drive, drive the tank. And then the very next loading scene, you get to drive the tank. Right. I was like, yes, and I went around. Blowing crap up, I had a blast. It was super really? fun. Oh. I, I don't think it was maybe narratively important, but I had a blast doing it. I got in the tank, drove it like 30 feet forward, got three missiles into me, it blew up, and I said, yeah. that's, huh, that's what happened that was a thing. Yeah. So the next time I loaded, I got in the tank, I parked it by the entrance, and I went on foot. Oh, I didn't even... Uh, I, see, so I, I used the tank like a sniper gun. I shot things from me. How far away well, with that, that would tank? Have been better to do. I drove the first one for a little bit and it got destroyed. And there was another one that you could drive. A and you could just hop off. in it. It would over yeah. to the side. Yeah. yeah. So I drove that one. It immediately got up to like ninety percent damage, and I ran out of ammo with it before I had blown up the other two AA guns. And so I had two left without any tank ammo. And so I had to like drive super carefully, like avoiding anything that could blow <laughs> me up, just machine gunning the rocket launcher guys from a distance, and then getting out of the tank, c 4 the AA gun, getting back in the tank, driving to the next one. Like, oh, it was so annoying. And I, I love how games now tell us like which tool to use for the job. Do you know how many times I like oh, walked yeah. up to an AA gun and yeah. I'm like, here's a grenade. Nope. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's a satchel charge. Nope. And I just didn't stick it properly. And it really oh, was really? a satchel charge. Then I used the missile launcher, and then I'm like, oh, great. Got it with the missile launcher. Must have been a missile launcher. Then a helicopter flies in. I'm like, well, oh, what yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. And you can't pick up missile ammo, right? You have to make sure, like, anytime you see a, a missile, you're like, annoying. oh, I have two in the tank. I'm going to waste them now and pick up three so that I can have three in the tank. Oh, right? and you figure out what the drop weapon key is that's good for the missile launchers. Oh, There's yeah. a drop weapon key? There is a drop weapon <laughs> key. I just, I, I just always was like, okay, I think I see an enemy up there. <laughs> Sniping with the missile yeah. launcher to use them. Just em. throw that one away that has one and then yeah. pick up a new one. So did the missile launcher heat seat? Sometimes it felt like it did. Uh, Wait, heat sink? No. Sometimes it, it felt like it did. It was laser guided. Yeah, it was laser guided. Okay, so maybe I was just following with my cursor because I oh, shot one, I yeah, way yeah. missed, and I went, darn it, and I went, went to aim for my next no, one, yeah. and I went, whoop. I'm like, yeah. oh, hey. It was laser guided like in Half Life 1 when you turn on the alt fire. Okay. Right? So there yeah, was like yeah, yeah. wherever the laser was pointing when it got that distance. Now, sometimes with the flying aliens, it was hard to tell when it had gotten far enough for the laser to need, need to be on top of it. But if you just kept it on him the whole time, it was okay. So I never figured that out, and I dumb fired all my missiles. It's all good. I, Did you succeed? Most of the time. Most of the time. I almost felt like the helicopter was, hey, they haven't died enough lately. Let, let's just yeah. kill them. Oh, man. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe I took the wrong turn. Were really annoying. I really yeah. thought that I took a wrong turn, and every time the helicopter shot me, I, that was the... Wrong way. I yeah. cannot know I'm supposed to die here. Or the, the Matrix 3 tentacle mechs that would just like all swarm you, surround you on like 10 sides, and fire ice missiles at you so that you can hardly move while they're all yeah, destroying yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, a, um, human enemies were much more fun to fight than the aliens. Yeah. yeah. There's like a the point basically when you enter the alien temple that the rest of the game is maybe not as fun other than the VTOL part. Yeah, the VTOL. I love the VTOL. That was pretty fun. And I didn't remember that. I hated it for a it long before. time because I missed the ascend button. So it was like, oh, use Wasad and use this to roll and use uh, shift to go down or control to go down, right? And I just kept losing altitude. The whole time I was having to like point up at the sky <laughs> to like fly up, slowly sag down. I'm like, what is going on? And then eventually oh, wow. I just happened to hit the space bar and I was like, oh, I have lift. And it was much better after that. That's so when you great. when in, when, you, when we not been to the alien spaceship? <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, I'm having to use my thrusters. I have thrusters. Yeah. Why have I not been able yeah. to use those? 
That's what I wonder. Why does the nano suit have thrusters? Mm -hmm. Like Where, why? Why would that ever be? Well, and why can't I use them like in coupling with like the max uh, strength, right? So there's a bunch of puzzles where you have to like jump up things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you ever try to jump across something thinking that your maximum strength would get you across? No, it, right? you have to. Instead, instead you just jump up and you're like, oh, well, now I'm gonna plummet to my death because I can't get any distance with the maximum strength. Yeah. Whereas I like, well, speed. I should have, right? But I was, I was right. like, oh, I'm just gonna like bounce way over this thing, right? And it seems like at that point. You should be able to use thrusters if you have them to get a little extra right. distance. We're talking the Princess Peach from Mario Two floating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. What? How? What was your breakdown in like powers you used? Like speed versus armor. I rarely use speed. See, I yeah, always I was in it. I should have used it more probably. I, I didn't use it early on. Early on, it was almost always armor or camo. But then later on, I used speed a lot. I didn't use strength that much. I used strength maybe twice. Like, well, aside from the jumping, the jumping and hitting the doors down. too. Yeah. Yes. I'd never go into it. <laughs> I forgot like halfway through the carrier part that you had to switch to strength. Yeah. To the door. Why is this door not open? Yeah. <laughs> that took me a little bit too. Yeah. So overall, if I had to like describe this game to like someone who's never played it, it's a pizza buffet. And I'll tell yeah. you why it's a pizza okay. buffet. You go to a pizza buffet, you're not getting great pizza. You're getting a lot of pizza and a lot of experiences, and you're going to be annoyed by a lot of people there. That was my experience with Crisis. Like, yeah. there were fun moments. I'm like, that was a fun, memorable moment. I liked that a lot. And then I went to Alien Spaceship Land, and I floated around like a goofball for the better part of an hour and a half because mm -hmm. I kept getting lost. Oh, yeah. And you can't oh, just yeah. follow the right wall there, right? Because like, when you get lost, like, really standard is confusing. stick your arm out, stick to a wall. Right, but it's like, oh, weird. This amorphous colon is now. I have to go up and down and, and there were, figure out where to go. And there's so few landmarks. Am I wrong, or was there a part that was specifically just a loop? Yes, there, there were several like, loops. Several. Yeah. Okay. Where you would literally go around and like. You're like, oh, like, I finally found I've, it. There's this little hole in the wall. Yeah, I've been and here then before. it just puts you back into like the main bay. Yeah. There's still a couple parts where I don't understand how I got from one room to the next room, right? So there was like force fields blocking you, right? I was like, oh, I'm going to Qui-Gon Jinn this crap and get right through, right? Like, you just got to catch up to Darth Maul. Yeah. And then it would never open, ever. And I'm, I'm like trying to avoid, because I have almost no ammo, because I wasted it on all the aliens. There's no ammo in their ships, right? And so I'm trying to wait for this thing to open. So I'm just running away from the aliens, circling the force field over and over again, and it never would open. Yet somehow, eventually, I like thought I backtracked and I was into the next room. Is there one part where one doesn't open and you have to go through the floor underneath it? Yeah, that must have been what happened because I, I was like, fine, I'll backtrack. And then suddenly I was farther forward. And then there was another room like that where you couldn't get the uh, big metal door to open until you killed every alien. But that hadn't yeah. happened before. And again, I was almost out of ammo. And so I was just avoiding them. And then eventually I was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to go max strength. I'm going to melee these guys so that I can save the 12 bullets I have left. Mm -hmm. And I killed them all, and then the door opened. I was like, oh. So did anyone else do what I did and carry the scar around empty of ammo the whole game? I did for a while. <laughs> I did until you got the, the Gauss rifle. Oh, yeah, that's when I dropped it, too. Then I swapped it. And I had no ammo, and I'd just been carrying it the whole game, hoping... Well, I used... Because it had the little tactical attachment that you could put people to sleep. I was like, oh, maybe I'll use this in but then I never did. I never put a single person to sleep. Not once? I think Not maybe once. once I twice. was going to do it, and I was like, well, let's just shoot him first. And he just died, and so I was like, yeah, that's better. Can I just say the FY-71 is the worst rifle I've I ever I loved owned. it. That was the one I carried around all the time. Just because there but was ammo for it. There was it. ammo for it. Well, there was ammo for it, but I switched it out of automatic fire. Yeah. I switched it to single fire, oh, and really? it was great. It was like my multi-purpose mm. toolkit, right? Because I was carrying around the precision rifle all the time for sniping, and I'd run out of ammo. And so then I was like, okay, well, at least I can use the FY-17, and I can kind of peck at people. Because you can put the sniper scope on it, or yeah. the assault scope on it, right? And I could have hit people from far away and still do See, damage. you said something, Murphy. You could hit them. I would put, like, 20 rounds into someone, and sure. they would not drop. Yeah, if you didn't But you have shots, 20 rounds to put, right? Sure. Shots. And so I'd put the, I'd put the, I had the silencer on it the whole time, and then I would put, like, the sniper scope on it. I'd switch between the reflex scope and the sniper scope, and I'd take people at a distance. That's but, what I did. By taking it out, you mean you poked them until they got so annoyed that they fell over. Sure, but, like, the precision rifle was just as bad, right? Like, I'd, I'd put a bullet in somebody, and it wouldn't hit them for some reason. So I'd put another one in them, wouldn't hit them for some reason. So I'd put another one in, and eventually they'd fall down. I'm like, okay, let's move to the next guy. And then suddenly they stand back up, and they're shooting you again. Because they don't actually die. They're just like, ah, someone shot me. Oh, I'm good. But they fall down, they look like they die, yeah. and then they come right back. I and so I'd have to use, like, four bullets to kill somebody at distance. 
and you only can hold like 26 or something. Right. But I, but I mean, don't take my advice because I carried around that empty rifle like <laughs> the whole game. And then I'm like, one of the Gauss rifle you get, I'm like, yeah. goodbye, old friend. <laughs> I was frustrated that you could only carry 48 shotgun shells. I loved the shotgun, but like, it, there were not that it. many. It was great for those aliens, the not the tentacled Matrix ones, but the ones the that were lower down ones. that would like melee you. Mm. It was great for those guys. I could see that. But again, you just ran out of bullets so fast. And so I, I basically, I would switch to whatever gun the enemies were using, right? Like, I didn't like the submachine gun, but I would switch off of the FY-17 when everybody was using the submachine gun. Did we ever figure out why some were using a submachine gun? Were they a different looking bat? They looked the same to me. I think no, they looked well, the same. Well, even the Marines that you'd meet up with, some of them would use the FY-17, some of them would use the submarine gun, some would use the shotgun. It was not clear Or scars, why. they actually had scars. Oh yeah, scars yeah. as well, yep. Yeah. But the fact that there were your own allies that were using the submachine gun, like uh, they still make my demo for all my theories. Submachine gun was awesome inside the alien temple. I didn't have it in like there. against the aliens. That's basically the only time I ever used it, but it got them pretty quick. Hmm. Like because they fly in so close to you, right? You just hit them. And I spent the first few minutes in there pretend, thinking I couldn't shoot them, so they're like all hitting me, and I'm just running through, going, "Guys, stop! This is bad!" I'm like, "Whoa! I need to be fighting back." I don't know, my brain just thought, I'm like, <laughs> I'm in their temple, I probably shouldn't be spilling their blood in their own temple. Trend. Like, maybe we could salvage the situation okay, here. And okay. Can we talk about Nomad himself and how much he spoke in the game? Because I feel like it was it was very minimal until you got to the temple. And then like, it was too much. Yeah. It's like, come on, Chad, you know, like, can. Throughout the aircraft carrier, he's talking all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't notice that until you just said that. But. I liked it. Yeah, I liked how much he spoke up until the temple part because it felt like there wasn't a lot of input, but it was at least enough that it wasn't like the silent protagonist, you know, yeah. Lord Freeman, where it's sure. awkward when people talk to you and you don't do any response. Yeah. There was at least like, yes, sir, no, sir, that kind of thing, but that was about it. Yeah. But then once you got to the temple, it was too much, and there were some really corny lines. They were bad. Yeah. Especially one part after you escape the temple and everything's all frozen, mm-hmm. I think right before you got to Prophet. You've been fighting some aliens, and then one comes in a cutscene, and Nomad's like, what the heck is that? And you're like, you've been fighting these things. <laughs> like, well, why did you say that? I didn't pay attention. Made no guess. sense. Okay, so let's talk about um, Prophet jumping over, like, all heroically and landing there to be alive. Yeah, in the area. ice part? Yeah. Okay. Everyone else saw that coming a mile away, right? Or was that a surprise I, to anyone? I remembered that he came back, that he wasn't dead. So for a first playthrough... I wouldn't say I was surprised. I... I I wondered if something like that was going to happen, if Prophet was going to survive. Like, I just went through this miserable alien level. Did we all hate the alien level? Yes. Okay. I think that's pretty universal. I, Everyone hates that part yeah. of the game. I loved the aesthetic. It was very Ridley Scott, aliens. It was gorgeous, yeah, right? it looks cool. But as soon as you lost gravity, it was just too irritating to be any fun. Mm-hmm. And it was weird how it happened, too. Like, it didn't shake. It didn't, like, nothing changed. Brian Wilson's yeah. like, I'm floating. I lost, I lost gravity. gravity. Yeah. Like, Oh, here's my thrusters that I guess I have. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so surprised. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, well, there goes gravity. There's yeah. song. It's and that. there was, yeah, there was very little hand-holding on that part. Like, it's way different from the rest of the game. Yeah. And different from other video games, even, well, where you don't really have much of a favorite reference of how am I supposed to do this? Where yeah. am I supposed to go? Well, and the little yeah. doors, the, the, the louver doors. Like, I walked through the louver doors the first time, and I'm like, I bumped into them, thing open, please. I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe I hit Okay, I hit him, and I, and I go, right? Yeah. That very first door took me forever to find because you lose gravity, you float up, and so immediately my thought is, oh, gotta go up. And so I flew up all fizzy lifting drinks and went the exact <laughs> wrong way and scoured the entire, that entire arena, right? And then yeah. finally I'm like looking everywhere, I go back to where I had taken off the ground and just up into the right was a door. I was like, oh man, I'm an idiot. Yeah. They didn't use light very well. I liked the current, right? So they had the current that mm-hmm. you were supposed to fight against and that helped you yeah. know where to go. And then the current went away and you just had no idea where to go ever. There was one part very subtly where it was like there was a bunch of different hallways and the one that was lit up was the one you were supposed to go through. Yeah. And, and that it was did the only help. time that I noticed when that. When you got close to that hallway, it like cutscened immediately and it was a jump scare, right? And okay. it also helped you know, oh, clearly that's oh, where we go. I need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But the jump scare pushes you away from it again. And again, in that amorphous you block, you lose where you're at, and yeah. you have to find it again to get there. And it changed, because it had like a, some cap on it or something that opened up or something mm-hmm. like that. And so it didn't look identical. The lighting wasn't the same afterward, so it was hard to find. Yeah, especially on the like some of the bigger rooms where you're fighting aliens and you're flying all over the place. Like You would get so disoriented. And they would look very symmetrical, right? And so yeah. after you're fighting them, 
Yeah, I'm like, was I headed this way or that exactly? Way? And I, I kept having, yeah. I kept having trouble with the, the whole idea of, okay, so I'm trying to go, like, am I trying to go deeper into the alien structure? Am I trying to escape? Am I trying to try to profit? Yeah, what was I doing there? Explain that. Really. Yeah, and would just say escape. Now, eventually, there was a, a liner, and there was, there was like try to go up and out and through or something like that. I was like, oh, okay. I actually noticed that a lot. There were multiple times where the objective would not tell you where to go. Right, if you would open the tab you had to literally have been paying attention to what the audio was and it didn't replay, right? Yeah. It wasn't like that they would nag you and be like, hey, I said get to the flight deck. Hey, I said get to the flight deck. Hurry up. Why aren't you at the flight deck, right? Mm -hmm. Every now and again they would, but for the most part, you had to actually listen. Now, if you paid attention, there were signs and so you could follow and get there, right? Not on the alien ship, of course, but at least on the aircraft carrier, you could follow the signs to go, oh, I'm going to the armory, yeah. right? But you just had to remember what they said and go, oh, this is where I need to go. Yeah, I went from like a free roving badass in the wildland jungle to I'm the courier on this stupid ship. Yeah. Like it was so annoying to yeah. me. Yeah. That part where you're just walking through this ship talking to people was a little too long and like. It just broke. It was like a different game. Yeah, everything has been so action packed up until yeah. then. Yeah. And they forced disarmed you, right? It, it didn't feel like a natural yeah. thing. It's like you're on an aircraft carrier where people are carrying guns all the place, but not you. I mean, All right. you, you sit in the seat and it's doing some diagnostics and it felt like the opening scene for a game. Like, this is the yeah. part where you yeah. use your mouse and uh, am I looking the right direction? Do I want to reverse the yeah. camera controls? And also the heavy-handed for, heavy foreshadowing of the nuclear gun. I can't remember yeah. what it was called, right? It was like, the oh, tech, obviously yeah. I'm going to need that. And then you can't get it. I was trying to break in and get it. And I was like, mm -hmm. all right, well, I guess I'm coming back here later. And of course sure I did. Speaking of the yeah. military. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. That scientist has the weirdest line in the whole game where he's like... If I was 10 years if younger. If I was 10 years younger, but he didn't look old. It was like so out of place and like misogynistic. Like it was the weirdest. I just of, felt awkward and yeah, uncomfortable. It's a like, very, very strange and moment of the game. Maybe I can't remember 2007, but in 2007, did we have those giant spectacle ear hooks that went way behind your ear like that? Because he had the weirdest coat hanger ear I didn't notice that. I didn't glasses notice. I'd ever seen. Oh. And then later he's not even wearing glasses. And so I, I really noticed because I was like, those were weird glasses. Speaking of the firing part, character. it drove me nuts how when you'd be sitting in a transport, so we're these elite trained, I've got this fancy nano suit, I've got other like hardcore marines there. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the cutscene, they've got their fingers in the trigger guards of their weapons, <laughs> and they're sitting there just pointing it across each other like this. I'm like, you would be angry. Uh, yeah, I would be because well, that bothers me. But yeah, I'm like, I already you know, always see it in Hollywood movies and TV shows. Everybody does that for some reason. Yeah. It's just it's a like, trope that's never gone away. Could you not point that high powered rifle at my head, even though I'm wearing an. Oh, well, did, you like the, did you like the Marine that was just like, man, I, I need to get one of them suits now. Yeah. And then he gets like, We smashed. wouldn't care about your butt that much. I don't know. I expected him to die. I did too. Like, yeah. Did I thought the ship was going to like explode or something at that point. I'm like, oh, well, get ready to go down. Yeah. Visually, though, when you exit the VTOL at that point, that was one of the best parts of the game. It's <laughs> night, all the explosions. There's tons of planes flying overhead and just like the AA guns going off. Like that part was... Visually and just sound wise, like one of my favorite parts. And you don't see a lot of that in games even today, where you've got like constant, like just NPC planes flying around yeah, doing stuff. Yeah. Like as aesthetics, right? Yeah. We don't see that a lot in games. You'll see like, oh, here comes a scout ship or something and it has a function, but these were just decorations. Yeah. yeah. And then the boats out in the harbor that were just patrolling that if you made enough noise, yeah, they'll start shooting at you. Right, but you, yeah, if you didn't engage them, they, they yeah, just don't happen. Oh, really? I immediately engaged all of them, <laughs> them so I didn't know. <laughs> So now, I wouldn't kill the pilot of the boat, I'd just kill his gunner, and then he was just like stuck going around yeah. in circles. Very cross, driving around. Yeah. But then eventually, once he did park, get out and shoot me with his handgun. Wow. Really? Yeah. I don't know that they would exit the boat. Yeah, he did eventually. I, I mean, I shot him, he got a round off maybe. But Most of the AI logic I saw was, wait for sound, fire it where the sound came from, scream racist comment, and then have all your buddies congregate in the exact same location. Yeah. Because they'd all yeah. just go whoop and circle in right where you were. Yeah. Now, a smart person, me, I think I'm smart, I grabbed a grenade and just tossed it at their feet. It wouldn't kill them. Really? Like, you'd go boom, and they'd all go, ah. Yeah, the grenades didn't seem very effective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the parts where the helicopters dropped people off, Mm -hmm. It dropped like six guys and they lined up like pips on a die, like six, and they just stood there. They never moved. <laughs> like the helicopter took off, flew away, and like I killed other people. The six of them just stood there in their lines. That was and, their like, job. Did nothing. I loved those glitches, right? So, like yeah. on the aircraft carrier, you've got all these tentacle monsters flying around attacking you, right? And then they like 
get stuck like birds or bugs up in the top of the, some of the antenna work on oh, on, really? the, on the boat, and they like couldn't get out of there. They'd be stuck. And I'm like, oh, I'll just leave him while I find the other ones, and I'll go back and peck that guy out of the antenna. Nice. So did you enjoy it when you were driving the armor column and it was Idaho? The oh, I didn't really understand what they were talking about with Idaho. I'm like, is Idaho the, the company? Like, what's... like those are our group or the, the tank formation was yeah, like yeah. Idaho, you know? Okay. So I was like, oh, there's something for Cynic, you know? Yeah, I'm from Idaho, so... Uh, but uh, there was no potato launching out of the cannons, so that, that would have been rad. Uh, yeah. That would have been more fun than the tanks by themselves. I hated the tank part. Yeah. <laughs> the game, like I tell you, it's the pizza. Like, like the the ice planet. What do you think about coming out of the ice area? I thought again that that was a gorgeous cinematic entrance. Right, gorgeous. right? it was a beautiful landscape. It had changed things yes. up. Right, you'd gone from dense forest to alien ship, which was lovely but irritating, to this ice cape. They were changing things up really mm-hmm. well, right? Yeah. Even the introduction to the very beginning, when you land on the island, there's a lagoon, there's, you know, the arch, the natural arch that you have to go under to open up into the jungle, right? Like, mm-hmm. they did really good with those introductions and levels. As far as the design after that point, it was a little bit less amazing, right? Uh, and then you're having to shepherd profit everywhere too. That so was that was, was another bad time. moment. Was guarding profit. That I swear the game designers just say, "Hey, we haven't had a guard mission or an escort mission yet. Yeah. Time to put one in. Here's so, ten minutes." Mm-hmm. You know, those guys that had the mini guns that seem to be extra armored, right? Before you get to profit, right? Before All you the enter the mines, the, the, the enemy ones that they seem to have like special armor. And nano suits. They're nano suits, but I was wondering if maybe they, they were cyborgs or something because they seem different than all the other ones, specifically the ones with the miniguns. And so when Prophet showed up, and then he's this you know big bad guy shooting all the aliens, right, to save the day. I thought that something had happened to him, and he'd been like upgraded to be one of these cyborg soldiers oh, really? for their side. Like maybe he died, yeah. and so he was going to be like this enemy combatant in disguise or something like that. Uh-huh. And so I was kind of disappointed when he ended up being just that flat two-dimensional character. Yeah. I like the cheap dig, though, when you first see the enemy nano suits. Like, yeah, they they look like ours, but they're not as not. They look stupid, or I can't remember what they said. Okay, so the the part of the graveyard when you right, first yeah. them, I remembered that that's what that happened, even though it had been years. And so I took out my binoculars, tagged all of them, because you can see all the guys up on the hill before oh. they come down oh. into the graveyard. <laughs> And so then when they cloak, even though you can't see them very well, I could see them on my radar and see, okay, this guy's coming up to me, so turn that guy, shoot them, and I just picked them off one by one, and it was easy. I remember it being like yeah. one of the hardest moments of the game. Yeah. It, it was hard, but it was gorgeous. I loved it. It was just a beautiful environment. The lights and the shadows played wonderfully. Uh-huh. The cloaked soldiers going in and out. Before I realized that they were actually cloaking, and I'm thinking I'm just losing them in the shadows and I'm not paying enough attention. It was, it was gorgeous and wonderful. As far as the binoculars go... I never used the binoculars unless I was specifically instructed to use the binoculars. Oh, I tag people all the time. <laughs> well, it's hard to tag people when you're just barreling through on a, on a big rig with a machine gun yeah, mounted. But yeah. Did you try to take that giant, what was like an 18-wheeler with a machine gun on it? Oh, yeah. That, Could you? Well, what were you I supposed to do with that? Did you change the camera angle to third person? No. That helps a whole lot. <laughs> I'm in the driver's seat going, yeah. Wait, so I think there's guys just when you're driving, you can change it to third? Yeah. So if you're, uh, when you're in the cockpit, you can only shoot like, I don't know, 90 degree field of view, right? right? But you hit F1 and it changes the view. You can hit F1 again, I think, and it changes it even further back. And now you can aim completely independently. Oh. And so I would like drive pit and I'd shoot people behind me and shoot people oh, in front wow. of me and shoot the helicopters. It was grand. That sounds way better. Yeah. Especially the helicopters, if you focus on their fuel tank, you could take them out with the SMG guns that were mounted. On the, on the vehicles. But I never saw anything that said you could change camera angles. I just went, man, this is hard to drive. I bet I can change camera angles. And I pushed a bunch of buttons until I found it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That so, would be way better. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. do that at all. Um, when I looked in the, in the key configuration, I saw, it was kind of a spoilery key configuration. It's like, movement, here's helicopter, here's VTOL, here's tank. I'm like, well, I guess I'll be driving a helicopter and a VTOL that. and a tank. I think I saw vehicle, but I didn't, you know, I don't know, register the but I just ones. I didn't find the vehicles fun. I the the, the, the end of all third yeah, person love, man that <laughs> changes everything. I just see one. I'm like that's gonna make me a target. So I'm gonna go back to speed. I'll make a noise, have them shoot me once, and I'll just run past them. That's what I did most of the time. I I had a blast driving the vehicles even when there weren't bad guys around. So there's one spot I'd killed all the bad guys from afar with uh, the mounted machine gun. But I was on one of these big rigs and there's the rice paddies everywhere. And they're like stick to the road. I'm like what happens if I don't stick to the road? I'll tell you what happens. Awesomeness. You go <laughs> plow and throw those rice patties, you're like, goosh, and bah, you pop out the other side. It's amazing. Huh. 
So who else right. tested the theory of are those landmines actually lethal? Oh yeah, absolutely. I ran into some by accident, I think. I did not know there were mines. They were more like bouncing Bettys. Did you know it's from World War II? Because yeah, they'd pop up. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I the first time I'm like, oh landmines, I got a landmine more, and that's kinda of fun. I see this thing pop up, I'm like, I wonder if that was a landmine next thing you know I'm loading. Yeah. Well, by loading it means bringing back the a few feet. Sure. Or a few hours, depending on when the last save was, yeah. because quick save was not great. I, well, I, I tried not to good. save. I tried I not to save. I, because I, I was like, I want to I wanna play this throughout without doing this. And then it crashed like two times, and I'm like, screw it, I'm starting to save again. <laughs> yeah. There was one time I hit quick save when I meant to hit quick load, because I had done something bad and awful. I was like, I need to redo that. And it had been a long time since I had actually saved. Oh, and so yeah. I had to replay a whole, whole chunk of it. So I had an autosave on the aircraft carrier where I had just taken out uh, the giant mech guy, right? It autosaves and some missile hits and I die. Oh no. And so the autosave kept loading and I would just die, 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 die. So it's like that Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> and so it, eventually I was able to switch to pistols, jump and run the, the moment it loaded and get far enough away that it just severely injured me rather than killed me so I didn't wow. have to play back. But I had another one where it was a problem and I it crashed the, the giant mech that you're supposed to kill. They kept saying, destroy his turrets, take out those turrets, those turrets are killing us, take them out. And they were already dead because I had saved it after that because it had crashed before and I couldn't fix I had, it and I had to go back in time and load an older save. I had some weird things like that where it seemed like if, if I saved it and reloaded, certain things would already be done. Like guys would be dead, even though I hadn't actually killed them that time after loading. So I wondered if Interesting. I don't know there were some bugs with with saving and loading. I didn't notice that, but I mean it could have been. I guess when I was driving the VTOL, I did notice a little bit that it seemed like there were less enemies the more I died. But I thought maybe that was just them being nice to me and being like, "You've died a lot. Let's tick the enemy <laughs> count down more." Yeah. There could have they could have used some of that in the opening levels. I started out playing it on hard and I quickly turned it down to <laughs> yeah. which I was kind of ashamed that I had to do that like especially the boats oh like, though the machine guns on the boats were yeah. insane like so you're ready for my super shame so I knew you guys were ahead of me and that I was lagging behind because I'd had some technical difficulties and so I figured to catch up to you I should play on easy and I still died way too much. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the easiness uh, affects like bullet damage or anything like that. I think it means oh, that your suit so. your suit recovers quicker, right? So if you can get out of the line of fire, you'll recover mm -hmm. quicker. Maybe the enemies die a little quicker. I wasn't one hundred percent sure if that was the case or not. Uh, but it it didn't seem terribly different because I did do a little foray in normal mode first, and I was like, oh, let's try easy. And it didn't seem much different, but mm. I don't know. How many did anyone kill themselves running at full speed, hitting into something? I got hurt. I'm not 100 percent sure I killed myself or not, because usually when I was running like a madman, it was because there was like a bunch of missile launcher guys trying to kill me, and I was like, oh, just get away from it. And so I was never sure if I like ran into an exploding barrel or if somebody just missiled me. So <clears throat> some fun facts: three trees <laughs> killed me. <laughs> so if you're on speed and just run into something that in low health, it'll give you die. Oh, you don't always die, but I guess I didn't hardly ever use. Now speed, remember, so. at the end of your speed, your suit's out of energy, so it's just yeah. physical damage at that point. Okay. And I'm going full speed, so three trees took my life, two Humvees or the Jeep things took my life. Running over you, or are you running into them? I ran into them. Okay. And um, I just tripped once and died. <laughs> like there was nothing wrong. I was just running straight full speed and just went dead. It's like oh. I'm a klutz. You stepped in a molehill. I <laughs> twisted ankle. Yeah. <laughs> a wicked tw twisted ankle. So, on the aircraft carrier, you know that big mech that was standing on the aircraft carrier? Mm -hmm. I kept dying over and over and over again, and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, he's not hitting me, nothing is happening. Why am I dying? And eventually I figured out that there was invisible fire on the aircraft. Really? And if I was walking in this spot, I was burning. And it just so happened that I was camping out in that spot because it was kind of close to the missile launchers. Mm -hmm. And I kept dying over and over. And I'm like, I'm like, am I too close? I can't be that close to that fire. But was it was just something killing me like on a floor again. below or something? Maybe. I don't know. But I just kept like dying from like fire damage. That's crazy. I, I think Crisis was a story of, it was very, I'm going to say ahead of its time. It, it introduced a lot of things oh, yeah. that no one had tried yet and yeah. no one done. And a lot of them weren't polished that well. The developers were so concerned with whether or not they could that they didn't stop <laughs> Yeah. No, I just felt like a lot of stuff, I'm like, well, that's kind of a cool gimmick, and mm -hmm. then, oh, it's broken, horribly broken, and I hate it. Yeah. I did appreciate 
the variety, though. Uh, yeah, I liked it. That because it kind of tricks you because the first five or six missions is you just walking through the jungle shooting stuff. Yeah. And then it kind of does some interesting things after that, and so I kind of appreciated the second half of the game more, even though some parts were annoying. Yeah. I don't know. I kept kind of going back and forth of, do I like this or is this just too annoying for its own good? Yeah, I I felt like it was like a buffet. You know, there's some things in the buffet I really like, yeah. and other stuff that I will not be partaking of. Yeah. I like a pizza buffet. I'll drink from the fire hose. <laughs> and a pizza buffet. I had a blast. Uh, I mean, that said, I got super frustrated with a lot of sections of it. Mm -hmm. But I played again in a heartbeat. I had so much fun. Yeah, I expected. I don't know. I expected to like it more than I did. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting to be as frustrated with certain things, but I think overall I still liked it. Yeah, oh, it was fun. Well, I had a good time. I enjoyed myself. At, at the end of it, I was getting a little bit like, you know, if you're eating something like a nice cake or something, sure. you're like, this isn't that great. Why am I still eating this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, I've gotten this far. I might as well just keep going. Yeah. And it's thankfully not too long of a game. No. Not compared to these 120 hour single player things that we yeah. have nowadays. Like, yeah. was it 12 hours or so we looked up that it's. Well, what did oh, you look really? up your game time? How long you were? Well, I mean, so I had I, I had nine line, episodes that were each just under an hour, so somewhere in the ballpark of eight and a half hours. Yeah, that's about. That's probably about somewhere around nine. Yeah. yeah, I bet I took longer because I was going so slow and sneaky and sniping yeah. stuff. <laughs> I was I was riding through Baja. It was yeah. great. Uh, so, Crisis maximum game. Sure. <laughs> Who loved being play? It plays great best on Intel Core Two. I was like, hey, <laughs> you can escape through that. I would hit that. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's gone. Wait, speaking of SSDs, are amazing because I remember this game taking so long to load oh, yeah. back in the day. Like just having it on an SSD was the best. Yeah. I, like like quick loads were instant. The in between level loads took maybe 10, 15 seconds, but yeah, it was quick. I swear, I, back in the day, we waited for minutes. Interesting. For this to load. Yeah, I never played it back in the day, so I don't know. I did You're install it on my SSD. Most of my games I install on the spinner that I have, just because yeah. I have way more space on there, and so I just shove them there. But the these games, since I, I got this one on GOG.com, and so it just installs by default on the C drive, I was like, yeah, I'll just leave it there. And so, yeah, it loaded great. That's good. Well, any other final words about Crisis? Yeah, roller coastery, but I think I think it's still worth replaying, even. Absolutely. If you haven't played it for... The first time, it's still... And I think it's, it's le less it. glitchy than a lot of older games. I've, I've really had to patch a lot of older games to get them to run correctly. And this one, out of the box, yeah. worked pretty well. There were but a few any, crashes, they were irritating, but usually I could recover pretty well from them. Right, yeah. Like, as long as you were saving fairly often, it usually wasn't yeah. too big a deal. If yeah. it crashed completely or if you just ran into weird AI bugs or stuff. Yeah. And sometimes it would be funny. And... So that said, I did do the shameful thing and love to see like cheat codes, skipping levels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a console mode. You can skip any level that's horrible. Oh, okay. Not really? So if you want to skip core, we'll understand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I don't know. Does anything happen in core that like you can't live without? I don't think so. There wasn't even like a plot Probably point not. that was super important. You just, I guess, are those the aliens that are inside the other suits or are the other things just robots? I thought they were in them. I thought they were piloting, kind of like you That's were piloting in the nanosuit. That also, it's like from Independence Day, which they're probably taking it from that. Too. Yeah. Of course, I did have to make that joke multiple times on my stream that I was going to Jeff Goldblum those consoles, but you can't, <laughs> you can't even interact with them, right? Which was funny. You can interact with anything. You can pick up the chickens, you yeah. can pick up the tortoises. You walk up to a console and it's like... It was Casper through it. Yeah. Super annoying. Wait, it's it sounded like we were winding down, but I have some things to Sorry, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going speaking, speaking of consoles... Why on the any of the like the Korean computers that you had to interact with in the bases, there was an image of a three D spinning uh, three and a half inch floppy. That was weird. Like this game is supposed to be set in twenty twenty, but even when this game came out in two thousand seven, like no one's using floppy disks, right? Well, that was clearly a jazz drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Those were dead by the 20, 07. I know they were. Were they? Version. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they were definitely dead by 07. Like I, I think the jazz drive was dead by. Oh, three probably, hmm. and then like right when it kind probably of fizzled out, because I Omega zip drives were big in like two thousand, and then I can't remember the next bump up size. Or was it maybe just the? They still called it a zip disk, but like a zip disk higher capacity or whatever. And then Jazz was right at that, and it hmm. died. But. Hmm. I wonder that. There's a lot of signs on the island that are in English. 
but then a lot of other signs that are in Korean. And it's never anything that was like important to the player. Like I would understand if it was maybe in hard mode they would have all been in Korean. <laughs> maybe in easy mode they're all just ra- they're just racist yeah. English. I wondered that. I there are some other things I can't remember. I, re- I had a big list of like here's some quick questions. But I, yeah, you know, if I think of anything. I thought the assets in general were good, though. I, I enjoyed the depth that was on them, right? You'd go into a building, and it didn't feel flat. They put things on the walls. They put things on the desks. Yeah. A lot of them you could pick up, right? Like, you could pick up the secret files, throw them around the room. That was kind of fun, right? Uh, they didn't have a huge depth of assets, but they would lay them out in varied ways to help it feel a little bit more lived in. Which yeah. Helped. True, true. Did either of you get the visual glitch with uh, crazy mouths? So oh, once, yes. I have a screenshot on, for it. <laughs> one time on the aircraft carrier. I had one soldier on the aircraft carrier that had super crazy mouth. Mm-hmm. And then the other crazy mouth was that it kept crashing for me at the very end, right as you go to jump onto the helicopter. And it crashed yeah, for me like three awesome. times there. And so first of all, she's saying like two things at once because I would get on the helicopter too fast. And so she's just like, come on, come on, you can make it. Well, she's like, I got you, I got you. But her mouth was like going all crazy with this big gaping hole of yeah, yeah. the center of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I looked into the center and did consume me. It was frightening. <laughs> that, that was also one of my questions. I remember that why, when she brings him on board and the ship's all sinking and it's all getting all sucked in, why didn't they close the door? I, mean, I get that the player wants to watch that happen because it's visually interesting, but story-wise, why didn't they close the door? <laughs> yeah. I like how she's like, I'll help you, I'll help you. You're going to catch me, who's probably a 220-pound dude, wearing, wearing this giant <laughs> nano suit. Your yeah. thrusters are going to help a little. <laughs> <laughs> the thrusters. Thrust. Oh, yeah, I have thrusters still. Thrusters I, the day. Okay, so obviously she had, like, the bare midriff shirt. Fine, wear whatever you want to wear, but I think it's a little silly that both, like, the female scientists had bare midriff shirt. But why did they give her a little jacket from Baby Gap? <laughs> <laughs> it's got, like, these teeny tiny little pockets. She couldn't close it if she wanted to, and she's yeah. clearly a petite model in the game uh, it didn't I was frustrated with the jacket hmm. yeah. and that's that era of game though they didn't like care about like politically correctness and have all no. body shapes it sure, was like the world is a different place the female look like this and you will enjoy it I, well I get that you want to make a character hot but like the jacket didn't add anything it just was the wrong size like the, and was she going on this expedition like oh in case I get chilly I'll just borrow my little ne- <laughs> my little niece's jacket here was it her dad that died? That got frozen? Yeah, it was the dad, wasn't it? Didn't I think it was, I think it was dad. There was like no emotion. Like I don't remember her reacting. To no, I wasn't very all. tied to a bunch of the characters. And that scene was awkward. Where there, like the there's the she, you're in the little dig site or whatever, and you're watching on screen in your camo. Okay, yeah. Why was he moving so much? You've got a I camo suit. Yeah. So like, and sliding stuff around. He's like, and and not just sliding a box. Maximum strength. Sliding a box. <laughs> yeah. It's like you could just be invisible and just sit there. Because if you didn't move while you're invisible, your power held up pretty oh, yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So you could have just like been, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out. Did you? Did anyone else cloak while driving vehicles? No, I never tried. I did every time. It's like really? no one sees me. I'm just a vehicle driver. I tried to cloak and grab people by the neck, thinking, "Hey, maybe they'll see a floating body." Then I realized you decloak when you grab someone. I had an idea that I wanted to throw a frog at some people, <laughs> so I picked up a frog and then cloaked so I could get closer to them before I was going to throw at them. But they saw the floating floating frog and just shot at me. <laughs> I was like so disappointed. That Get a hold of like a football. I guess. Take it down. Yeah. I just if I'm ever in some random island excavating alien artifacts and I see floating frogs, this will be a warning. Mm-hmm. It's true. There are cloaked people. I picked up a frog and I was I was I wanted to throw it at somebody, and so I was like trying to scale the mountainside where I was. I wasn't sure where I was supposed to go, yeah. and I just slipped into the water enough that immediately accounted as swimming, and the frog was gone Aww. down the river. Sad. See, I wanted to get one of the chickens and climb into one of the sniper perches and be like, be free, my child. But, yeah. Did yeah. anyone swim enough to see a shark? No. I think I remember there being sharks in the game, if you swim out far enough. I did not do And that. it's terrifying, but <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to try that this time. Like, I think that's a thing, and I don't need to see that again. Maximum self-urination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, male or female voice on your suit? Female. I went with male, I guess. Yeah. Male's default. I think I just did default. Yeah, yeah. I did female. Because I'm like, oh, I just got sick of that throaty maximum. I turned to female, but then had forgotten that I did until quite a ways into it. I just wanted Jarvis talking to me. Yeah, that would be man. better, yeah. yeah. Did, Paul Bettany, or 
So did anyone else grab an enemy, throw them in the air, and shoot them like skeet? No. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Again, I never grabbed anyone other than an alien in the floaty space. That so was it. Maximum strength, people, grabbed yeah. him, tossed him in the air, and just went, shot him in the air. It was great. Completely wasteful, but it was great. I spent the better part of an half an hour doing it. I, I found myself struggling with trying to keep a good pace during the game so that any gameplay footage would be entertaining and wanting to indulge my inner hoarder and get every single piece of ammunition I could possibly have so that I had yeah. a full gun at all times. Okay, so. speaking of ammunition, I was so sick of the animation of picking up the same gun over yeah. and over. Mm -hmm. Could you not just bring it up in my HUD? Hey, you picked up 30 rounds. Yeah. Don't yeah. show me picking up the gun every yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, it's a less realistic experience, but I love just being able to walk over a corpse and get it. Especially when yeah. someone would die in the weeds of the jungle and you couldn't find the game, the gun. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. just like, why? Just let me walk in a circle like all games do and it just picks up. Or they had like died on a hill and the gun was way down below oh, yeah. their body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, thanks, physics. Yeah. Or they would die in the water, and sometimes I couldn't pick it up. Sometimes I could. If it was shallow enough, it would still let you pick it up, but sometimes it just wouldn't let you get it. Hmm. Yeah. So, some annoying things, but overall pretty good. Oh yeah, especially for an old game. I play a lot of old games, and this one held up great, runs great on modern hardware, very few crashes, yeah. uh, no, no points of the game that were just so broken you couldn't get past them, which right. does happen in a lot of older games. Yeah. Uh, and worth it. A good story, albeit kind of vague, kind of alien-y, which isn't the best, but engaging, intriguing. The characters were okay. You enjoyed them enough. They weren't irritatingly trite, right? Nobody was grating on your nerves, even though there was a guy called Psycho that was pretty chatty. He wasn't so irritating that you didn't like him. The yeah. the Admiral dude, yeah, it was a little irritating. But, Gene you know, Hackman kind of sounded good. I called him Gene Hackman throughout. I was like, okay, thank you, Gene Hackman. That's hilarious. Yeah, his death scene was pretty corny, I thought. Like, oh yeah! I'm gonna stay while you get away, and then get stomped on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, Gene, I'm on my way. That's hilarious. I did the exact but same I, thing. Which Gene Hackman was it? Like uh, behind enemy lines. Behind enemy lines. Yeah, Gene Hackman. Well, or that's what I was like, thinking of. The replacements, Gene Hackman, or is a football coach? <laughs> Basketball. I, oh no, that's no, no, that's that's, 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 that's yeah, that's There you go. I don't know my Gene Hackman that well, but yeah, I was thinking behind enemy lines. Yeah. So you. I'm sure he's been a military commander in something. Oh, he's the know. same military commander in every show. He's like, hi, I'm the gruff military commander. He was Lex Luthor? That's different. Was he Lex I forgot he was Lex Luthor oh, yeah. in the old <laughs> Superman movie. Yeah. Wow, wow, you dumpster dive some old movies back in there the day. There you go, man. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. Feel free to use the skip level and yeah. skip. Well, there Absolutely. There. I don't think you story. have to be a completionist. Have fun. Enjoy the game, right? It's not like you're going back and doing a chore. You're mm -hmm. doing something fun. You're getting an older game that you can get super cheap today and still enjoy yourself. It did make me want... I have played Crisis 2 once. I've never played the third one. And it made me want to go and like replay 2 and play 3 for the first time. And there's Crisis Warhead, which I think is from I've Psycho's I have. perspective. Yes. Which, why was he called Psycho? He seemed pretty even killed to me. Yeah, he, he wasn't... Super crazy. He's so, British. Why was he like all kind prophet and you call you call nomad, right? Like yeah. it was just yeah. weird. Just, I didn't realize I was nomad for quite a while. I didn't. They're either. like nomad. What's wrong with your suit? I'm like, I'm fine. I landed. I'm good. He's like, let me reboot it. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh. And I was afraid the prophet get mad at me and just vaporize me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I sure really hope die. that there's some of these some yeah. safeguards in there. Like he hit the thing to vaporize the one guy. I was like, oh crap, wrong suit. <laughs> yeah, I was like. Yeah. Can I, can I hold on to mine? Is, is that okay? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think you are profit in the second game. Oh, okay. really? I think so. Review-wise, the second game was not heralded very well. Right. The third game, though, is critically acclaimed, but it was not. It was a dud sales-wise just because people had given up on the series, right? Because the yeah. first game, the people that bought it generally couldn't play it, and so they were super mad, right? Second game, the hardcore fans bought it. It wasn't enough like the first one made them yeah. mad, right? Third game, apparently, was a beautiful combination of the first and second, fixed most of the bugs, but it just didn't sell well because people had given up on a franchise. I think I'm gonna get it and replay it. Yeah. I mean, or play the first. Isn't that the one that had the, the trailer of uh, Sharp Dressed Man that it, when they announced Crisis Three and he's got a bow and it's a big cinematic trailer? I think we'll throw it up here on the video. I know there's a bow in either the second or third, but I don't know which one. I I swore when I started this that somewhere along in the game there was a port where your suit got upgraded and you could like do 
I don't know if different things or just things got better. Like okay, I, swear, I swear, <laughs> I swear, <laughs> like I swear, I remember being sequence. able to stay cloaked and fire at people, or like stay cloaked longer, or things like that. And it might be the second game that that happens, and I remember, or that just not a thing, and I don't know what I remember. Or maybe you have to be on like the harder modes, and it's an extra feature that gets unlocked or something. I don't know. I, maybe, but I, that would be weird to me if that's yeah. not in. All I know is if I sneezed normal. in that suit, they all ran at me and shooting already. Yeah, like I couldn't even. Yeah, sneak. So, who knows? We will want to play the second one. It's possible. <laughs> any, other, any other final thoughts? No, I think we got it. Good. So uh, it's Fresh worth a play. Fun. Yeah, worth a play. Recommend. If you like FPS games, right? Oh yeah, I mean, that's it's it's definitely a category specific True. game. True. It, if you're hoping for you know an RPG type game, there's not any of that, right? Your suit doesn't upgrade, none yeah. of that. It's just you're playing through a linear story with a semi-open world feel to it, but you'll mm -hmm. be guided along in a linear fashion. Yeah. Um, next episode, we're playing, is it Darksiders? Darksiders, yes. Yeah. None of us have played, yeah. so that should be interesting. Which, the, the chat conversation is hilarious because it's like, not a medieval like fantasy game, and you're like, it's in a city. I'm like, I'm like watching the what? first part of the game. I'm like, this is like New York or something. There's taxi cabs, but he's got a sword. So if you want to join us, go ahead and, and uh, pick up Dark Siders. We'll be playing through that next. And uh, we have no idea what it's about, apparently. No. But that should be fun to come through. Yeah. And we'll keep this going with pushing 40 bit gaming. We'll just, you know, have a review of single player games over and over again. We're going to play through our huge backlogs. I have a massive backlog. These guys do too. We want to play through everything. Yeah. Cool. See you later. Thanks.